The 24-inch iMac uses the unbelievable performance and efficiency of the M1 processor, all in a new, sleek design. Apple made the switch from the bulky aging iMac to the all-new redesigned thin aluminum chassis. In this video, we'll go over the 24-inch iMac and my thoughts on it after one month of use. It's been a full month since I started using the M1 iMac as my main computer, replacing my aging 2013 Mac Pro. I could have still kept using the Mac Pro, but wanted to see what the M1 performance was all about. But first, let's talk about the brand new design. The 24-inch iMac is thin, really thin. It has a thickness of 11.5mm, which is about as thin as the iPhone 12. The display no longer has a large black bezel surrounding it, and instead has been replaced with a white bezel. A lot of people complained about the bezel being white, but I didn't mind it. I barely even noticed it since I'm staring at the content of the screen for the most part, and it just blends in with the peripheral vision. The entire computer, fans, and speakers reside in the chin, while the rest of the chassis houses the display and the sound resonance chambers. In the bottom left corner of the screen is a 3.5 audio jack. The iMac is so thin that a headphone jack just wouldn't fit. This is an interesting design choice. It's not really necessary for me since I have Bluetooth headphones and connect my speakers through a dock. The stand has also been redesigned similarly to the Apple XDR display. The stand for the new Apple iMac is stylish, made of aluminum, sturdy, and is also color matched. However, like previous iMacs, it's not adjustable and can only tilt. Grip pads underneath add just enough security to hold it in place while allowing users to turn it around or move the entire iMac with ease. However, the whole system seems too light to prevent accidental falls. Alternatively, a Visa mount can also be used to secure it, but you would have to specify that when ordering, as it's a completely different iMac unit. The hinge design is also reminiscent of the original battery-powered Magic Keyboard. The new 24-inch iMac colors are gorgeous. I went with the blue one. The colors on the back are bold, while they are accented with more subtle shades of the same color, such as the lighter shade of blue on the chin, the stand, and the accessories. There's also a mirrored blue Apple logo on the back, which makes for a nice touch. There are two different tones in the color design, a pastel color in the front chin of the display, and a more saturated color on the back of the computer. Combined with the thin white bezels surrounding the screen, the pastel blue helped maintain the color harmony on the display and minimize distractions. The color of the stand is also a blue tone and is matched with the keyboard and mouse. Color-coded accessories and peripherals are included with Apple's new M1 iMac models. Each iMac model comes with a color-matched set of accessories, including a magic mouse or magic trackpad with a colored aluminum base and a magic keyboard with a colored aluminum frame. Color details are applied to even the iMac power cord and adapter and the USB-C to lightning cable. The iMac comes with a magic keyboard and your choice of magic mouse or trackpad. My 24-inch iMac came with a beautiful blue keyboard with white keys. Similarly, the edge of the magic mouse is also blue, while its top is white. These are the same shade of blue used on the stand of the iMac since they're all made of aluminum. In the top right corner, you'll find a Touch ID button. This can be used to unlock the iMac when a password is required. It can be an inconvenience since you can't always use it. Just like on previous Touch ID iPhones, you can't use Touch ID when the iMac first boots up. Touch ID is also only compatible with Apple Silicon Macs because it uses secure enclave. A fun little info, the keyboard's redesigned curve is even consistent with the iMac's edges. As you might expect, the mouse also comes in the same colors as the iMac color. Other than the colors, it's still the same magic mouse. A single piece of white acrylic on top with an aluminum bottom. A minimalistic mouse with up and down scrolling and left and right swiping. Faulted for having the charging port located underneath, rendering the mouse useless while charging. Some people either love the mouse or hate it. The USB-C to lightning cable also comes in a blue color and is braided, which is a really nice touch. The power cable on the power brick is also braided and is blue. Even on the inside of the power connector is also painted blue. One thing that I like is the option for the Ethernet port, which is now located on the power brick itself, if you want a more secure wired connection. I've always preferred having a wired connection, but since using the new iMac, I never bothered to hook it up, and Wi-Fi surprisingly has been great. I would have never noticed the difference, as it's been suiting my needs thus far. Compared to the previous generation of iMacs, this new iMac has significantly less ports. Four USB Type-C ports are located on the back of the 24-inch iMac, two of which are Thunderbolt 3 ports, and the other two are just regular USB Type-C ports. 
You will only receive two Thunderbolt ports if you purchase the base iMac model. Either way, for my needs, I definitely needed more, so I had to invest in a Thunderbolt 3 dock. You can check out my CalDigit TS3 dock video here in the card or in the link below. I mostly use the Thunderbolt port to connect my iMac to an external monitor and dock. I do have to mention that although Thunderbolt connectivity is typically capable of supporting two 4K monitors, it's not supported on the M1 Mac lineup. Only one external monitor can be connected to M1 equipped Macs with a resolution of up to 6K. It's more of a chipset limitation on the M1 processor. Compared to the MacBooks, it's not a problem since the iMac already has one big screen. Bluetooth is used to connect both the Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse to the iMac, so that won't be eating up port space. You'll probably want to keep at least one USB Type-C to USB Type-A dongle on hand when using the other three ports for other possible device connections. Or you could invest in a dock if you use a lot of USB and Thunderbolt accessories. One thing Apple should be known for is their displays. For the amount you spend on a computer, you also get a remarkable display. Apple resized the display to match the increased resolution. Increasing the screen size from 21.5 inches to 24 inches necessitated going from 4 to 4.5K to maintain the retina resolution. It's now 4480 by 2520 pixels with a 218 PPI. True Tone technology, 500 nits of brightness, and color accuracy combined with wide color gamut make it a great display for creative professionals. My experience with the 4K display has been excellent. With color accurate reproduction and great pixel density for a 24 inch display, doing photo editing, design, and video editing looks all the more pleasing. In addition to the full sRGB color gamut, it also supports full NTSC, 89% Adobe RGB, and 100% P3. There are over a billion colors supported by Apple. Its display is not just impressive to look at, but it's also incredibly functional. 4K HDR content looks incredible, especially in the images and videos. The front glass of the display is coated with anti-reflective technology. While you do see some reflections, it's not as quite evident as you can clearly see with my other Apple monitor just how intense those reflections can be. With the new model, the camera now finally comes with 1080p video. It's equipped with a larger sensor and provides improved low light performance, which is a great improvement in image quality compared to the 720p camera on the M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. There's only so much the M1 chip can do on a 720p webcam, but with the 1080p camera on the new iMac, you can definitely tell the difference. The new M1 chip has better image signal processing capabilities, as well as computational video powers for image correction and optimization. It makes colors and grain much more vibrant, sharper, and accurate. The Neural Engine, a machine learning processor on board of the M1, will handle lighting optimization and noise reduction, as well as in real time. An array of three microphones on top of the camera optimizes audio, eliminating background noise and focusing on voice. As a whole, this has finally become a video conferencing Mac that doesn't feel dated. The 24-inch iMac monitor comes with six dynamic speakers. The speaker has two pairs of force-canceling woofers balanced by a high-performance tweeter, which produce room-filling audio. While for built-in speakers, they certainly are great. They lack bass and won't be replacing a dedicated set of speakers. I just use my old Bose Companion 2 speakers, which you can definitely tell the difference. If you play videos with Dolby Atmos, you will get spatial audio on the new iMac. Consequently, all audio will sound as if it's coming from a specific direction around you, and if you turn your head, it will still seem as though it's coming from that direction. Since all of the speakers are in front of the user, Apple hasn't explained how this would work on the iMac, but you definitely do hear more separation in the audio, especially when listening to music. In AirPods Pro and Max, spatial audio adds a sense of depth to the listening environment by creating a 3D surround space which is definitely noticeable since the AirPods are in your ear to give you that reference point. There are two fans on the iMac that carry heat away from the M1 chip. There's still performance to be gained by keeping the M1 cooler. As noticed on M1 MacBook Airs, with no fans and laptop, it begins to throttle. Regardless of how heavy my editing is, I barely even hear the fans kick on. The only time I've really heard them when is I would be playing video games. It's good to note that the base model iMac only has one fan. For the mid-tier and up, you get two. It's difficult to find anything to complain about the 24-inch iMac, as it's a colorful computer ideal for home use. The screen quality is excellent, 
The sound is outstanding, and the performance is better than expected. The base model starts at $12.99, and the premium model with a 512 SSD costs up to $16.99. It's difficult to justify the cost of this product with the same specs as other more affordable Macs. However, you won't find a comparable 4.5K display with webcam and mic for the price this Mac offers. You can upgrade the 24-inch iMac to 16 gigs of memory for 200 bucks more and a larger SSD for an extra fee. The components in these products can't be upgraded after you purchase, so make sure you pick out what you need. You can watch my iMac Should You Buy video for my full in-depth guide if you're considering purchasing. The 24-inch iMac is an incredible user-friendly computer. I love how beautifully designed it is and its simple 1-2, there is no step 3, setup. The new M1 chip really impressed me as someone who always bought $3,000-$5,000 Mac Pros. This performance for only a fraction of the cost? It's a game changer, especially for college students learning to do professional work. If you're a prosumer industry professional, this may not be the one for you. We'll all just have to wait and see in the coming months for that M1X lineup. In summary, it's a family computer meant for everyone or even a business front desk. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed my experience with the 24-inch iMac. In addition to being a powerful workhorse computer, it's also a superb multimedia entertainment machine, as I frequently watch content and play some games. With all that said, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all our latest videos. We're all super excited to see what Apple has in store for us in the coming months. What do you guys think about the new 24-inch iMac? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.